General Clark, you were in the military for over 30 years, practically your entire adult life. It's obvious, therefore, that you have foreign policy credentials, but what in your career has prepared you for the domestic challenges that you will surely face if elected president? Well, I was um, responsible in every stage of the military for the people that served under me and for the families that were there. And what we discovered in the volunteer army was that you couldn't ignore these people. The army's 60% uh, 60, 60 or more married. And so their housing, the schools their children went to, the availability of health care, the time off they had with their families, the ability to get the children babysitters or later child development center spaces, all that was very important to being able to build a unit and a team. And so like every other leader in the Army, I was very concerned with it. When I was a Supreme Allied Commander in Europe, I had 44,000 school children located in um, England, uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, Spain, Germany, Italy, and Turkey. And we worried about those schools. They were funded by the Department of Defense. They were my responsibility. And the students that were there were children of the people that worked for me. And so we had to make sure the curriculum was right, the funding was right, the administrative support was right, the parent-teacher-student associations were right. We changed the curriculum. We changed the leadership in some of the schools. We put in new procedures. We tried to give greater local control. We got rid of math land. <clears throat> we fought to get Head Start in those schools and so forth. But I worried equally about health care, the doctors, the hours, the clinics were open. When I was a commander at Fort Irwin out in the Mojave Desert, we were a complete isolated community. I held town hall meetings. I owned everything on that post. I remember driving down post one day, and my wife said, you see that big pothole? I said, yes, dear. She said, that's your pothole. <laughs> she said, you're engineers. They've been threatening to fix that pothole for a week, and it's still there. When are you going to do something about it? I said, yes, dear. And she said, and she said by the way, she said, do you know that your commissary is out of pampers? I said, no, dear but I'll fix that too. I mean, I was responsible for the whole kit and caboodle. And so I've been on the delivery end. I never made a law that, that about social services. But when people talk about those laws, I see the faces of people who came to my office. I see memorial services where we honored people who were killed in line of duty. And in some one case, a child who was killed by an angry parent in the home. And when I think about those cases and those laws, to me they have very deep personal significance. So I've been on the delivery end of the social work in a way that probably no other candidate has been. I can hardly wait to get on the other end and fix some of the problems I've seen in this country as I've lived through it for 35 years. <laughs>